Hi, I'm Tim May with Acoustic Music Pro. And this is the Mandolin Player's Guide to Rhythm. And even though a lot of us may spend a lot of our time learning to play solo on mandolin, a lot of what we do is we play rhythm with other people. And in fact, a lot of times we'll spend most of our time doing that. So there are a lot of uh, rhythmic variations that we can get into. Uh, a lot of roots music actually ends up being pretty simple um, rhythmic figures, but there's a lot of, of uh, embellishment that we can come up with and make things very interesting. So thanks for joining us and we'll, uh, we'll uh, go through some of the, the things that will help you create a little bit more interest in your rhythm plan. Okay, let's look at just a simple um, open G chord rhythm. Basically just going to play what we call straight eights. This is where I'm just going to have my, my wrist very loose. It's almost like I'm shaking water off of it. And uh, I'm just going to play if we count four, one, two, three, four, I could play quarter notes. Okay, that's uh, eight notes, and we just call it straight eights. All right? Now, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take that straight eights pattern, and we're going to end up emphasizing different parts of it, and we're also going to leave out parts of it. So we'll We'll, uh, we'll also do some things with triplets, eighth note triplets, sixteenth note triplets, but it all is going to begin right there. And so the next thing we're going to talk about um, before we start to subdivide that specific strum and uh, talk about some of the uh, ways that we can alter it is we're just going to talk about the chop, which is a big part of bluegrass music. Okay, I'm back to my open G chord here. One way we can cut the the um, sound of the string off is we can lay our fingers down uh, this way. In other words, I have a, a, a chord that rings like this. I want to just cut it off. And I'm just going to do it with, I'm laying both of these down, you really could just do it with your pinky. Uh, same with any, any open chord really, if I go to C, D, I'm just going to try to mute it with these fingers. Um, you want your chop to have a certain uh, duration to it. If it's too long, it can just be too much of the note. It can be too distracting. If you cut it off too short, maybe there's not enough of the note there, and it, it ends up being like a drum, which can be okay, but it's just there's a fine line between just enough of the note registering, or in this case, uh, a few notes registering, and um, you just don't want it to be too short or too long for the duration of the notes. Okay. All right, and the other way that we can cut the chord off is we can actually make a fully closed chord. Uh, this is a G chord, and if I make that full chord, um, I can just play the strings and then let my left hand release and just come off the instrument, and I can cut the sound off that way. Even if I have a, let's say here's a C chord, uh, where I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm leaving the the first string unfretted, but I'm muting it with the sort of fleshy part of my finger here. And what I can do there is the same idea. I can chop and cut the notes off here, or I could cut them off with my pinky as well. But since you got this many fingers down and you're muting this string, there's no reason to get anything else involved other than just take, taking your fingers off there. So sometimes it, uh, you may have a open, you may be playing sort of an open style anyway. Maybe you're doing straight eights. Okay, so you may want to stay with that sort of open uh, position when you chop. In other words, it might be hard to go from an open position here, right, to go to that closed position. So sometimes that'll determine which one you use. Um, if you're playing a, the bluegrass style where you're playing a lot of closed chords, you pretty much will always just use the full uh, left hand way of, of, take, of, of uh, chopping the note off. Okay? Right, let's go back to our straight eighths style of playing the open chord. So we're going to play down on the down beat and up on the up beats, which would be and, so it'd be the numbers one, two, three, four will go one, two, three, four, and so the ands one and two and we play upstrokes, and that's where our eighth notes come in. One and two and so that's one and two. And. What I want to be able to do is 
to grab any part of that straight eight rhythm and, and uh, dynamically uh, change things. In other words, I'm going to take each part of the beat, we're going to count one and two and and just do that much. I'm going to emphasize then the one and then I'll emphasize the and of one and then I'll emphasize two and then the and of two and you'll see how you can create different uh, sounds just by doing that. So first of all I get my rhythm going. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is emphasize the one. We're counting, this will be a two four measure. We'll just count um, count two and then I'm going to emphasize one. Here we go. Two, one, two. That has a more of a sort of a forward driving heaviness to it, so you can create a groove that way. Now, if I, watch what happens if I emphasize the and. So I'm going to get going again. Here comes the and of one, one and. Okay, it's going to sound more syncopated that way. It have just a little bit of uh, kind of outside sound that kind of has a little bit of rhythmic tension to it. All right, I'm going to emphasize two. It'll be similar to one, but it's a little bit different, so we'll get going. One, two, one, two. One, two. Okay, so that's two. Now you can emphasize also the uh, and of two, and this creates a really light kind of feeling. Uh, if you're doing uh, ballads or mid-tempo tunes, uh, shuffles, that kind of thing, um, this is a good sound for that. So I get going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I emphasize the and of two. So I got one and two and one and two. Okay. So if I did them all in succession, just to let you hear them one more, right after the other, it would be. Here comes one, one. So really, you're doing the same thing with your right hand over and over. All you're doing is grabbing certain parts of it and emphasizing uh, those. And so I like the fact that you're not really changing anything about your right hand. It keeps doing the same thing, reaching in, grabbing dynamically different things here. So keep that in mind because everything you do from here on out rhythmically is really going to be based on just that straight eights rhythm. All right, one thing we can do on Madeline is we can play um, almost like a the way a guitar plays a, a bass note and a strum. You can play the same thing on mandolin if I play a, a fourth string and let that serve as my bass. Uh, I can play a G note and then alternate with a strum that way. Okay. Um, I also can chop that so I could go. Now, a lot of times, in, uh, especially if I'm playing in an ensemble or whatever, where there's two or more people, um, there's not really much need for me to play the, the G string here because you do have a guitar or some other instrument doing it. But what it does is once you get in the groove of doing that, uh, it always keeps things kind of in time for you, even if you're not really letting the note sound. So a lot of times I'll just be sort of hinting at the note. I might not actually play it where it sounds out, but uh, I always leave the strum. So like, kind of like this. probably can't even hear it maybe you can just a little bit the idea is even not is not that it's even supposed to be heard it's just you're always playing consistently so if you're playing solo or with a guitar player who's not doing that much bass runs you can um, have that string sort of as a, a way of, of alternating without you having to do you know, too much strumming around we'll get to some some swing stuff later where we do more of a, of a full strum sound um, so keep that in mind, and also we'll use that, that sound of the open G uh, to do a little bit of walking later on as well. Let's look at 3-4 time, or waltz time. Uh, most of the time in, in sort of roots music you will play in 4-4 four, four time, and you know in rock and roll, uh, even in jazz it's, pretty, it's the most common uh, time signature, but um, sometimes we want to play in 3-4 time. And that's going to be three beats per measure. One, two, three, one, two, three, a quarter note. 
be three quarter notes in a measure, each one uh, gets its own beat. So uh, how do we do that on mandolin? Well, uh, standing the uh, G chord here, there are a few options that you uh, have here. We could just play all strums. I could chop the third one, all right, so I could go, and for our purposes here, I'm going to use this, the style chop. Since I'm playing open, I'll cut it off with my fingers here rather than using the full chord chop here. So I could chop num uh, the third beat, so it'd be one, two, one, two, three. Okay, I could chop uh, beat number two. pretty wacky sound but you don't want to do any one thing necessarily the whole song you know you could you can mix these up um, another thing we can do is we can play then the uh, like an alternating bass where we play the, the uh, first beat as a single note G note okay then I could also do that same thing and chop beat number three Okay, I could do the same thing, chop beat number two. Okay, um, and so that's sort of the basis for uh, for what you can do with the with a waltz rhythm. Uh, most of the time these days, uh, they like a little bit heavier sound on the downbeat. The modern ear sort of does because it doesn't want that necessarily want that real uh, backbeat. That kind of sound. A lot of times they kind of want that to disappear so you don't quite know that it's a waltz. So the backbeat's almost disappearing a little bit, so you have the heavier uh, downbeat. The same way that we showed you how you could uh, emphasize different parts of the beat and, uh, earlier in number, beat number one was that sort of forward driving heaviness. Same thing with the waltz rhythm. If you emphasize beat one, it'll have the same feel, okay? I want to show you just a, a couple of different chord uh, shapes here. I'm not going to get into too much chord uh, business in this video because you can get them in the book, but uh, just a, a couple of ways of surviving if you need some uh, some ways of maneuvering around with like a 1-4-5 progression and how to make a minor uh, chord out of a major chord and that kind of thing. Here's our, our big fat G chord. This is kind of a bluegrass G where you're, you're playing all uh, all four strings. But it's a pretty cool shape because if I take these bottom three here on the first, second, and third strings and just move them up this way, I have my C chord. And when I'm chopping, I can just mute that first string again with the first part of with my first finger there. I can chop there. Now I can just move that down the neck two frets, C, C sharp, D. And now I have a one, four, five progression. And so since I have that all, all closed, again, I'm muting the first string, uh, I can then move that anywhere. So I could move it up to A. Same thing. So now I have a 1, 4, 5, and A, and that would be A, D, and E. So you could move that anywhere. That's a pretty cool cool thing to do. There are, obviously, there are a lot of different uh, you know, inversions and different things you can do, but that's one a good start right there that gets you a lot of keys. Um, also, let me show you real quick here. Um, here's a major chord. Uh, so I bar here. If you have a big enough finger, you could cover strings three and four just with your one finger. Some people can do that. I bar. And that's my major chord. What I can do is just take the second string here and replace my ring finger there with my middle and move it back one fret. What's that, what that's doing is taking the third note of the scale chord is made up of the root, the third, and the fifth intervals of the scale. The major third is what makes a major chord. I flat that, and I have a minor chord. So again, anywhere you are on the neck, this is A. There's A minor. I could go B, B minor, C, C minor, so on and so forth. So just with those shapes, you could cover a lot of ground. Again,